Welcome to those who are joining us via Facebook and via Zoom. And I hope you had a wonderful week and you're looking forward to the word today. Okay, let's pray as we begin our session. Oh Lord, we come before your presence this Sunday morning. We want to thank you. We don't take it for granted, oh Lord. Thank you for the gift of life. Oh Lord, and as we're going to start our session, please let it be fun and let us enjoy and let us learn everything that we're going to be taught. In Jesus' name we pray and believe, amen. Amen. Now let's welcome Amarisa, who's going to lead us into a session of worship. Uh, hi guys. So let's just worship the Lord. Thank him for all that he's done for us and all that he's going to do for us. My God is awesome, he can move mountains, keep me from the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weak and forever he will reign. My God is awesome, he can move mountains, keep me from the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heal me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weak and forever he will reign. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome, awesome, awesome. is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me from the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak and forever he will reign. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome, 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 awesome.
let's worship the Lord for he's an awesome God. He can move the mountains. He heals us when we are broken, Lord. He strengthens us when we are weakened. He will reign forever. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. We love him. We worship him. We praise him. He's a mighty, awesome God. He moves mountains. He heals the sick. He cures. Oh, Lord, we thank you. And now let's just worship the Lord as we sing the next song. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away.
thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, O oh Lord. We give ourselves to you, O oh Lord. Our lives are not our own. We sacrifice our hearts, O oh Lord, to you, O oh Lord. We sacrifice our lives to you. We worship you. Take our lives, O oh Lord, as a living sacrifice, O oh Lord. We worship you. We love you. We praise you. Oh Lord, we give ourselves away to you. We sacrifice ourselves to you. We surrender ourselves to you, O oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Amarisa, for that wonderful session of worship. And I hope it has impacted each and every one of us. Now I'd like to invite teacher Elijah to give us the word to give us the word, yes. Welcome to Elijah. Good morning. You guys can hear me well. Okay. Thank you so, so much. Um, just as a way of starting off, I just want to uh, welcome everyone joining us uh, on Facebook and all those that are on Zoom. Uh, feel welcome. Thank you for this opportunity that God has uh, given us to just come into his presence and share some thoughts. I can see quite a number of us here, and it's nice to see you, Catherine, Becheba, of course, Amarisa, Peter P. Hazon, Emmanuel Baraka. I can see Andrew, and I can see Teacher Gideon. I can see Emmanuel Alela calling. Simba and Simba. I would like to know who that is. And I uh, can see Susan and Flora. Ah, there's Derek, there's Natasha. Karibuni sana. Um, I just want us to, to uh, do something here, but before I dive into what I want us to discuss, allow me just to say a uh, big thanks to Amarisa for that wonderful worship. I like uh, the, the, the choice of songs that uh, she's done this morning. And uh, particularly even the first song, uh, God is Awesome. I think it's very important for us to recognize uh, that God is awesome. Really, we need to settle that in our hearts, that he's awesome. And uh, continuously encouraging ourselves because in such a season, um, there's a lot of negativity uh, that is surrounding us. Left, right, and center, there's so much... Um, upheaval. There's so much fear. There are a lot of things that in one or the other, uh, instead of building our faith, is drawing away from our faith. And we need to encourage ourselves. We need to uh, look at faith as an account. I don't know how many of us at this stage have an MPS account. Okay, let me increase my volume. Can you hear me? Is it a lot better? Is it? Let me let me step it up a bit. I've gotten some feedback that my volume. Uh huh. How is it? Is it better? Better. Aha. Uh -huh. Great. Yeah. So um, I was basically trying to emphasize the need to build our faith account. If you think of an Mpesa account, a bank account. Right now we're in a digital world. Uh, we have our accounts in. Uh, you know, talk about your cash. You have it in your pocket in the form of in your phone. So if it is empty, if there is nothing in there, really you feel uh, incapacitated in one way or the other. The same goes with our faith. A lot of things is eating away our faith, most of the things that are, are happening around us. But that should not be the way to look at life. We need to be able to uh, log into a, a certain realm that will help us build our faith account. And that's what I want to look at this morning. And basically, it is, it is um, part of what I'd shared last time, but I just want to give it a different flavor. I remember last time I was sharing, I was talking about the fourth quadrant, but I'll try to give it a, a different flavor, but still unpack it or break it down in a way that we can all understand it well. Because as we've said, Romans 10, 17 says, uh, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I can, and as I've said this before, I can try and make it a little bit dramatic by saying, oh, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, and we should never stop hearing the word of God. Because as we go through the week, there's so much that can 
take away that which you've had, that which you've had on this, uh, such a day. So you need to keep hearing every single day, read your word. So let's dive into uh, what I want us to talk about this morning. And again, welcome all of us joining us on Facebook, like our Facebook uh, page. And of course, those who are with us on Zoom uh, feel welcome. And you can always drop a message that inspires you on, uh, on, the, on the chat uh, room. Let me share the screen. Um, and today, please, last time I had a bit of uh, uh, feedback later that I didn't, my, my screen could not be seen. Please don't keep quiet when you don't uh, uh, see my screen. I want to first of all confirm that you can all see my screen. Maybe somebody can just shout, and a big amen. Amen. Okay. Um, and I guess it's the screen, because you know, as I was uh, asking earlier on, it's the screen that only shows one slide, not two slides. One slide. Yes. Okay. Great. So uh, what are we talking about today? It's tip the balance. If you look at that uh, uh, image, uh, it's an illustration of what characterizes our lives in this season. Unfortunately, some of us, not uh, you probably let me put it this way an average human being who chooses to live by what we see and feel touch our lives will be characterized by that illustration tip the balance are we tipping now we need to ask ourselves are we tipping the balance in favor of fear or are we tipping the balance in favor of faith and remember the, the, the word of God, I think it's in Hebrews. Um, I just lo lost the, the, the exact chapter, but it, so it says 16. Uh, it's, it, I know it's in chapter 16. Uh, where it says that um, um, we, we have to, the, the, okay, the implication of that verse says that in heaven, the currency, or in our kingdom life, the currency is faith. For somebody to come to God or relate with God, we have to have faith. If you don't have faith, then it means you are not able to operate uh, the way God expects us to be. Without faith, we cannot please God. We have to believe that he exists. And those who pursue him, those who uh, look after him, he will uh, honestly reward them. And I think in this season, it's also important that we, we strengthen our faith. As I likened it to an MPS account, we need to ensure that our MPS accounts, uh, uh, faith MPS account, so to speak, uh, is full of courage, is full of hope. hope. And uh, the word of God is the source of that. The word of God is what feeds into that account. So we need to tip that balance. When at any point in time when you feel that your, your, your life is, uh, is characterized by too much fear, worry, distress, and anger, which is as I said, a lot of us sort of walk around with this, uh, uh, with, with a life illustrated, uh, characterized by what I'm seeing here or what we are all seeing here. But we can tip the balance. Remember Romans 8, 37 says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. As much as we might find a lot of challenges, God is saying that we are more than conquerors. And a conqueror means you overcome, you, you contend with a situation, but you are able to conquer it. You're able to, uh, to overcome it. Um, welcome, Yvette. I've just noticed that you've jumped in. So, um, so we can see the next slide, right? Good. So if we tip the balance, if we hang on to God's uh, word, we hang on to his, his, his promises, we keep encouraging ourselves, hanging around the right people, are listening to his word, getting the encouragement that we need, we should be able to tip that balance in our favor. And when we tip that balance in our favor, it means our faith account has grown. Whether you are a, a young person, whether you are an elderly person, all of us got to recognize that our faith account has to grow, has to be built. It's something that we keep spending it. It's just like money. When you have some cash in your impasse account, you will need to spend it to be able to, you know, uh, meet whatever need, whether it's buying food, whether it is um, uh, uh, traveling from point A to point B, you will need to spend that money. But you need to replenish that account. 
So we also need to replenish our faith because many experiences that we go through life, uh, our, when our aspirations are not met, met our expectations are not met, uh, what we expect, like the, the current situation we are in, none of us expects to be home at this point in time. Maybe based on our calendar, we should be being, uh, at home, but ideally the past few months we should have been in school. But we all know that the past few months we've been home uh, for, for obvious reasons. As, uh, if you talk about adults, many of us have lost jobs or a source of income. That is not what we expect to have in a normal life. But we need to encourage ourselves. We need to remind ourselves that we can overcome this situation. This crisis, we can overcome it. And that, those sort of experiences that we go through every day, hearing negative news, it sort of takes away our strength. It causes anxiety. It causes worry. But we need to be able to tip that balance and not allow that to, to, to dominate us. What need to dominate our thought life? What need to dominate our thought path? Should be arrest. Can someone mute? Okay, thank you. Um, we need to be able to ensure that our faith account is replenished. And this one way of doing that is just taking the word of God and dwelling upon it. Finding uh, how do I ensure that my, uh, I'm, 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 I'm soaring above this crisis. And we will look at uh, something that, as I said, what we, we still talked about last time, which is, we call, I called it uh, the adversity quotient. I was calling it the, uh, the fourth quadrant. I will break it down again, because as I said, we need to talk about this thing over and over, and we'll be able to see how to link it uh, to God's word. So in our way of introduction, that was basically to help us understand. And I, it's my prayer that uh, by the end of this service, or as we move into the week, our understanding of, uh, of our understanding will grow. And we'll be able to, under, uh, to, to know that um, uh, we need to keep building our faith account. We need to replenish it now and uh, uh, over and over, now and again, we should not tire. We should consider ourselves conquerors. You know, they keep saying uh, there are battles that you can only, uh, you never get tired fighting until you win. Yes, and you'll never fight only once. You know, there are moments when you have to keep fighting. And I think our walk of faith is something that we need to understand. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a walk that. Uh, it's continuous. It's, 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 we have to keep pressing in. We have to keep pressing on. We, need, we should not tire. And that means when we tire, we need to go, uh, go back to God or go back to our, our place of uh, inspiration. Or, you know, if you're in a desert, you go to that oasis where you're able to draw some water to help you refill. So we need to refill every now and then. We refill ourselves with courage, hope, joy, and peace and not allow anxiety, worry to carry the day. Now, uh, in that, that illustration, that picture, we can see that, it illustrates what it is, you know, where even in the dry land, we are still able to grow. And we're talking about the fourth quadrant. And the word quadrant, basically, I think I want to mention it a bit. The word quadrant basically means, you know, uh, four, the, uh, something that is, can be divided into four parts. Quad. Quad is four. So, and I'm sure many of us have, uh, have been in a uh, biology class. You've known how the, the, sh the shape of the, of the heart is when it's drawn to us to help us understand how it, how it is. Our heart, the one that pumps the blood around our bodies. You know, there is the lower and the uh, upper section, or the upper section and the lower, the uh, ventricles. I don't want to go into the details, but uh, our, our, our heart is also in a quadrant of a shape, four parts. So basically, I'm saying that there is one part, uh, there is this, uh, I want to look at something that defines our lives. There are certain aspects that define our lives in terms of, um, you know, what you call our quotient, and I'll break it down. Let me just go into uh, explaining it, then it will be easier for us to understand.
Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Have we lost Elijah? Hi. 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 Okay. Looks like they Sorry for that. Sorry. Apologies for that. Apologies for that. Yeah, just forgive us. That's technology. It happens. Yeah, it happens. Um, the teacher ledger is just. I can just pick it up as we wait for him. Wait for him. Maybe we can just um, talk as we wait for him. We give him a few minutes and uh, just break the ice as we wait. Yeah. What are uh, the few minutes that uh, he's, uh, we've started the lesson, even uh, for those of us who were there last Sunday, uh, what is it that you were talking about? So I just want to call one of us as we wait for him and as I open uh, to share my screen in case he's not able to come back. Yeah. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Baraka, are you able to share with us? Yeah. Kindly just share with us what you've learned for the few minutes and uh, last week for those of us who are available. Emmanuel Baraka, kindly talk to us. Um, I've learned that we are more than conquerors and there are, there are situations that we need faith so that, so that we can conquer them. Okay. We need faith so that you can conquer some of these challenges. That's very good. Yeah, well done. Uh, someone else, Natasha? Natasha, can you just share with us what uh, maybe we learned last week and what uh, teacher Ledge is emphasizing on? How do you deal with challenges? How, how, we, how do you just come up in instances where we are having challenges and things seem not to be working our way? Yeah, Natasha, then you can hand over to teacher Elijah. I can see his back. Thank you, Natasha. We learned about um, the emotional quotient and um, social quotient and adversity quotient. And we learned about uh, one's ability to bounce back in after a challenge has happened. Yeah. After something um, unsettling has happened to them. Yeah, great. Yeah. The ability to bounce back. Thank you very much, Natasha. And welcome back, to Elijah Karibu. Okay, my apologies. Um, actually, in this season, such things happen when uh, you're in the middle of of of, of whatever you're sharing, and uh, the internet just be, be, uh, happens to act up on you. So, so can you be able to see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. And I'm audible enough, right? Sorry for that. My apologies. So, um. Yes. Oh, I've just come in when uh, I was getting some feedback from Natasha that uh, uh, we more or less covered the same thing last Sunday in terms of the four quadrants. Confirm that. Is that the case? So we are basically going over the same thing. Yes. Not a problem. Okay. So, um, I, I was giving the definition, and uh, as we said, adversity is basically uh, a difficulty, an unpleasant situation. And I was talking about the time scale, it could be short, it could be protracted. Like what we're going through right now is fairly protracted. This is not what we expected. It could even go beyond this. So we need to be able to understand how do we characterize our lives during this season to be able to, to, to overcome. Uh, as, as it said in John 16, 33, that Jesus himself warning us that in this world, we will experience tough times. But we need to have trust in him. We need to have, uh, our, we need to be with him uh, because he's assured us that we will overcome. In him, we'll have peace. Outside him, uh, I can assure you, it's not easy. So 
he is like when you're in a storm and there's only this boat that can help you jesus is like our boat in that storm we need to be able to sleep like he during a storm at the sea of galilee he was actually asleep he did not worry so much because he had he knew whom he trusted in and that was god so the same we need to be able to understand that for us to sail through this season our confidence our trust the person who should be our anchor is god and his word so that's very important then the quotient basically means the amount or the quality that characterizes our our lives that amount whether it's fear if you have it in big amounts i can tell you it, it's only a matter of time uh, and 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 to be it, it, the balance will tip uh, in a wrong direction but as I, as I said at the beginning the balance need to tip in favor of our faith that should go home tonight or even this morning the balance should tip in favor of faith and not in favor of fear so resilience is basically that capacity to to bounce back as 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 i had natasha allude to it's the ability to bounce back these things will stretch us we will go through some pain because in this season there are people who are even losing loved ones to, to this uh, terrible disease. There are people who, are, uh, who have lost livelihoods, but how are we able to bounce back? Even from that uh, grief, how are we able to bounce back and just trust God that he will be able to pull us through? It is so important that we have the right amount of the right quality, the right amount of faith. And when you talk about adversity question, why I like it very much is because uh, research is telling us that uh, adversity quotient and i'll break it down further is so much has a very strong correlation with our spirituality and this is research that is saying and i think i mentioned it last time and probably you guys discussed it as well that your ability to bounce back which is your resilience because adversity quotient you cannot mention it uh without mentioning resilience it's like resilience is just the other side of the coin when you talk about adversity quotient your ability to 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 push through uh, going through tough times without losing your mind. It's so, so important that we understand that spirituality helps you to define and helps you to understand what our adversity quotient is. Uh, the emphasis is because we, in, in many a times, there are other cues or other qualities uh, that is so much emphasized. And that's why we're talking about the four quadrants. Remember, I was telling you there are four portions. So we have the intelligent quotient, which again, uh, as has already been mentioned, is so much emphasized in school, which is still very important. Your ability to comprehend some of the subjects that you do in school. Uh, then talk about uh, your social quotient, you know, the networks that you have, the friends, and I'll put an emphasis there, your good friends. You know, there are certain friends who in this season, all they can tell you is the negative stuff. Oh my, stay clear of, stay clear of such type of friends, tell them, try to sow a seed of hope into their hearts because the more you hang around such type of people you'll soon be like them if their ducks quacking you'll quack like them please you need to be like the eagle fly with the eagle with the eagles hang around the right people who will sow a seed in your heart your parents i'm so sure our parents will want to sow a good seed will tell us some encouraging words ensure you hang around the right people who are your friends that determines your social quotient you know uh, because in life actually you notice that networks your friends actually help in many ways so that's very important uh, that we a point that we need to 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 emphasize then there's also the emotional aspect the emotional quotient which is just um, your, your, your ability, your character, mainly de determines your character. And this has got to do with, you know, respecting, uh, respecting uh, certain boundaries. We know the boundaries that we need to respect as teenagers. There are certain things that are no, no go. We should not be indulging, even if it's on the internet. There are certain sites we know we should not be touching, you know, pornographic sites, sites that will, will, will pull you in the wrong direction, will affect your, your thinking, your emotional life such things, dealing in drugs, uh, premarital sex, some of these things we need to uh, keep them away. And that means we are respecting uh, boundaries. And that talk about, that, that's actually what uh, entails the emotional quotient. It's so, so important. But uh, the, other, the, the, the one that I was emphasizing so much on is 
that quotient or the, that quality and it in, in it a right amount that will help us pull through this season. As I said, many of us are, are walking wounded. We're walking in fear as, uh, because of uh, we're allowing the circumstances, as it were, to influence how we think, to influence how we do things. Last time when I was talking about this thing, I was giving a, a more or less a very uh, uh, unfortunate incidents of, uh, of a mother that I came across uh, her story uh, who, who decided to commit suicide together with her kid. I think one probably was saved. Uh, they, she jumped into, into, the, into a uh, flowing river, which for me, it is really sad, really sad. So one key thing that uh, should help us pull through this season without losing our minds is what you call adversity question, our ability to, 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 to uh, wade through these very uh, murky waters, wade through this storm, and be able to come out on the other side strong and navigate it. And for sure, let me, assure, let me uh, send this message to all of us that we cannot do this thing in our own strength. We need God. And that's why I was saying I like the fact that um, an adversity quotient in itself is strongly correlated with our spirituality. It means if any person, any person who comes to you and tells you, I have a strong adversity question in big amounts, if you examine that person's life, put it under a microscope, you'll be, you'll be able to uh, uh, see that this guy has a strong relationship with God in his, his spirituality or her spirituality is in, is in place. And that's something that we need to run with in this season. That's something that we need to bear in mind in this season. And I, I keep saying we need to encourage ourselves. Let's not stop talking about this because it is not easy. And even uh, this particular crisis might not be the only crisis that we might encounter in our lives. There are many other dimensions of, 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 of tough times that might come to us. But how do we ensure that we have uh, uh, the resilience in the right quantity to pull through? It means we need to focus on tipping the balance in favor of our faith. Yes, tipping the balance in favor of our faith. And that means our, uh, our work with God is so, so important. Fair enough to talk about, you know, SQ, EQ, and the way they can help us. Um, but it's so important that we focus on, 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 the, on the God factor, which in many and big ways affects our adversity quotient, our ability to sail through the hard times ability to go through a very hard time and come out on the other side stronger. Um, and as I was mentioning, research has shown it. You know, the way uh, I'm a researcher and I know what it takes to be able to come out with data that can prove something. And that's science. And you know, as, a, as a probably has been mentioned before, science tries to explain what God already knows. God is just trying to help us understand think some, some of the things that you already know and i'm so glad when i see science saying that for sure uh adversity question and spiritual question are so interrelated it brings about our uh when all those are in place will have uh, a, a quality of life that is able to help us go through seasons whether it's good season and whether it's a bad season. And by the way, remember, the word season is very important. Like uh, right now I'm in this place where right now it's summer, but come the winter, it's so cold. So when I'm in, this, in the summer season, I need to, uh, I need to character, character my life in a certain way. The same thing with the winter. I cannot dress light, uh, uh, take a light dressing uh, the way I do it in summer when I'm in winter. I have to be able to uh, dress appropriately for the for the season. So seasons are God made. So tough times could also come uh, uh, will also come to us. So how do we need to characterize our life? How do we need to, uh, uh, for a want of a better word, let me use the word I've used for season. How do we dress up for the season? One way of dressing up for the season is ensuring that your life that the balance is tipped in favor of faith that helps you 
to go through this season. And as I said, and I need to emphasize again, spirituality and your adversity quotient, your ability to pull through are so interrelated. It's one and the same thing. And this is something that, as I said, researchers have, have brought it out very well. When you go through catastrophic, catastrophic situations, your AQ will be able to help you through. So, uh, as I say, the seed of hope, um, in this, this again, sort of just to uh, illustrate what life can be. You know, we, we've lost a dear one. Uh, your father's friend is unwell, uh, sick with uh, maybe a case of COVID. Or your parents have lost a business. Oh, I cannot write my exams this year. All these things will more or less come into your mind. But remember, the seed of hope should not be less to the point the seed of fear is, is, is carrying the day. Again, let it not dominate you. Keep saying the word of God. Keep saying it to yourself. Meditating upon it. Sit on it. I personally do that. And in fact, that's why I love uh, the confessions. And I probably want to spend some time so that we just meditate on some of the words that uh, we'll be having here. Because life for sure will throw uh, as it will always, a few times it will catch us on the blind side. But when even if it catches on the blind side, it does not mean that you go under. We should not go under. The word of God is with us and we need to hold it as an anchor. Um, if, so if, if I'm to uh, flip to this, so how can we uh, make the seed of hope to uh, work for us. I'll go back to this place. So God's word is the um, is our anchor. And we have to keep meditating upon it. There are some words that are here, there's some scriptures that are here that I want us to just say to ourselves where we are now. Where, whether you're in, a, uh, in, in your bedroom, in, your, in the sitting room, uh, wherever you are now. I just want us to go through Say this to yourself. I'm sure we can all read it. Just say it to yourself. Like every, uh, I think, how many are they here? One, two, three, four. There are about ten. Every scripture, if we can say, we can spend about uh, five seconds just saying it to ourselves. I'll say it loud so that you, but wherever you are, all say it to yourself. Let's start off with Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. I want you to say it again three times and personalize it. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all I ask or imagine, according to his power that works within me. One more time, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all I ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within me. That should build some faith in me. It should build some faith in you. It should build some faith in your friends. So we need to meditate upon that word. Let's do uh, Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 three times. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Or, or the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Now, the, second, the, the last two times, personalize it. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them or because of the circumstances that are around me, around you. Or the Lord your God goes with, the Lord my God goes with me. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. One more time, uh, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Elijah, do not be afraid or do not be terrified. Say to yourself, mention your name. Elijah, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid because the Lord your God goes with you. The Lord, uh, the Lord my God goes with me. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. Psalms 27, 12. The Lord is my light and the Lord is my salvation. My salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold. He is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? Let's say it once more. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
whom shall I fear? I shall not fear corona. I shall not fear any terror. The Lord is my stronghold, of, is a stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? It's the last time. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold, is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? As you say that, it builds faith in you. Let's do Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? One more time and personalize it. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for me, if God is for Elijah, who can be against me? Who can be against Elijah? One more time. What then shall we say in response to these things? In response to, to, to things that are happening around us. If God is for me, if God is for Elijah, who can be against Elijah? No one can be against me. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that may God of hope fill me Fill me, fill me with all joy. Let it, let the faith be tipped in my bal in in favor of uh, the balance be tipped in favor of, of my faith, with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's do Psalm thirty one twenty four. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. All you wait for the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, let's do Psalm thirty one twenty four. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. All you wait for the Lord. It's encouraging just to think about it. I mean, I feel there's so much joy in my heart just by mentioning that scripture. So let's do it one more time. Psalm 31, 24. Be strong. May my heart take courage because I wait in the Lord. You who wait in the Lord, take courage. You who wait in the Lord, take courage. Romans 8, 28. Let's do it twice. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Oh, hallelujah. How great it is to think about this. Again, let's do uh, Romans 8, 28, one, one more time. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who, who love him. I love him, and therefore all things work for my good, who have been called according to his purposes. I remind you again, you, God loves you you've been called according to his purposes and therefore all these things shall work for you. Have that in your mind. Have that in your mind. Let your faith grow knowing that all these things shall work in your favor. Let's do Isaiah 41.10. I know we are uh, we've got a uh, just uh, we'll be winding up in a short while. Fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Hallelujah. The word of God. Let's do it one more time. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I am your God. I will strengthen you. God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you, Elijah. He will help you. I will help you. God himself saying, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. So we should take courage in that word that God will uphold me with his righteous hand. He will help me through this season. He will strengthen me in this season. And this balance will tip in my favor, in favor of my faith. Mark 10, 27. Let's do that together. Jesus looked at them and said, with man it is, it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. What is it that we are, you're going through this season that feels impossible run to God's word turn to his word and just say it might be impossible with my parents things are tough it might be impossible with my teachers telling me things are looking thick but with God it is not impossible all things are possible with him he will give you peace in this season that word already should just sow a seed of peace in your heart give you some hope because being in a place of hopelessness is the worst thing very important for us then first peter 5 7 let's do it together cast all your anxieties on him we were talking about anxiety cast it all to him because he cares for you how great to know that god cares for me and therefore i just need to cast my anxieties to him 
How great to know that the maker of heavens and earth cares for me. And I have to keep talking about it, filling that faith account with these words. Faith is the currency that we use to operate in the kingdom, um, in, the, in, our, in, in God's kingdom. So we need to keep speaking the word of God, keep talking about it, keep saying it to ourselves, casting all our fears, our anxiety to him, because he cares. That's so important to even think about it. Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. I think we, we just then, uh, but with God, all things are possible. It's the same that is, uh, was said in Mark 10, 27. Philippians 4, 13. Hallelujah. I think one of this is one of those very... Um, uh, inspiring words as well. When you feel your strength is waning, you have nothing left in your tank. But he says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I like what somebody said. This just reminded me that at that time when your mind is telling you it's over, just know that you, you still have like about 60% of your strength left inside you. You know that thought already should give you some hope? When you feel like you've gone 40%, you're tired. You've only done when your mind tells you, you have, you're tired, you cannot pull, pull through anymore. Just know that you still have like 60% of your strength left in you. That's so encouraging. So let's just take courage in God's word and say, Philippians 4.13, I remind myself, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can manage through this season because he gives me strength. I can pull through because he gives me strength. He gives me strength. He gives me strength. Just say, I gives me strength. Elijah, God gives you strength. You'll pull through. Then Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. And a future. That's so important to know that regardless of what's happening around, God has a plan. God has a plan. And his plans will not fail because there's a COVID. No. Of course, there's certain things we need to do. We need to take care of ourselves. Social distancing where, uh, when it's necessary. Uh, using the PPEs, the uh, face masks, protect yourself. But all this, whatever is happening, will not stop God's plan for our lives. I think it's so important. And as I keep saying, this is always affecting how we think because we are the products of our thoughts. I'm sure we've shared this many times. And as I said, we have to do this over and over to build our faith, to remind ourselves. As we go through life, things happen. We lose focus of some of the things we've talked about now. But go back to it. Let your, your thinking be affected by what you're talking about. Bounce back. Because as I say, the air in that ball, when it's flated, it allows it to bounce back. When you're deflated, when issues of life uh, cause, a def, uh, def, uh, cause you, you, you to be deflated, go back to God's word. Go back to his word. Just meditate on it. Say it to yourself. I do, I do the same. It's not easy. Uh, do prayer time. It's not easy. The, the truth is life can uh, be harsh. But our ability to bounce back, our ability to pull through is a function of the air that is in us. What is that air in us? It's God's word, the faith. So tip the balance in favor of the faith account. Sow the seed of hope. Sow the seed of courage by speaking the word of God. Just like we've mentioned today. Be careful how you think. Let your thinking not be flooded with the news that we hear right now. Oh, the cases of COVID is going, uh, uh, cases are increasing. Oh, the mortality or death rates are increasing. Okay, that is happening, but let it not affect how you think. So it's my prayer that we will spend time speaking this word to ourselves. And I'm sure maybe for the few, these few moments, if you did the same exercise as I did, you feel some encouragement. You, you have some hope in you to pull you through. Your adversity, adversity quotient is gotten some injection, has gotten some energy. You know, the amount has increased. The same way when you, you talk about your IQ, the more time you spend doing your maths, your physics, your course, whatever, you, you, you increase the quantity of your understanding. The same thing with your adversity quotient. Settle down, do some go, study, meditate upon it, speak to yourself. It will be able to help you through this season. Allow me to stop there. Uh, we are at, at quarter past, or nearly quarter past uh, the hour. And uh, if there are any thoughts before we, give, give, we, uh, we uh, create a way for a teacher Gideon to just guide us through uh, the word of God, praying, sorry. Any thoughts 
from basically what we've talked about. So any thoughts that you want to share with us? Your reflections from what we've just discussed. Any reflections from what we've discussed? Anything that stands out, Emmanuel. I like your 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 icon. Oh, very nice, Emmanuel Alella. Any reflections? Are we there? Can somebody turn on the video so that at least I know unveil so that I know you're there? I might think I might, it might sound like I'm. Uh, it sounds like I'm in the room all alone. Oh, good. At least you guys are. Thank you. At least I know I'm communicating. So some quick reflections, maybe two or three minutes, then we can uh, uh, um, I can create space for teacher Gidi to just uh, take us through some questions. Long time, please, some quick reflections. Laura, are you there? Okay, Michelle, Mish. The house yep. is so quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some reflection, quick reflection. Maybe just one thought, then we uh, we allow Teacher Pegidi to come in and guide us through the prayers. Um, what I've learned is that no matter what happens, you can always refer to the Bible for any help, for any courage, for any need. God is always there for us, no matter what happens. Very true. Yes, yeah. that is a, 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 it, it, it called, the, uh, we, we need to run back to God. Faith currency, as they say, in, in, in uh, the kingdom of God, uh, the currency is faith. You know, just the same way in Kenya, the currency is Kenya shilling. Where I am uh, here in Jordan, the currency is, is, is uh, we call it Jordanian dinar. If I have the money, I can be able to buy my way through in terms of that. I can go to the shops, buy something that I need. I can go to the uh, supermarket, buy some grocery. I can go to a uh, clothes line, buy some clothes. So that currency helps me. The same way faith currency in God's kingdom allows us to be able to uh, purchase God's, you know, quote unquote, for uh, let me because currency is all about purchasing, but just to be able to appropriate God's peace, appropriate God's hope, I mean, hope, appropriate hope that will carry us through. We should not be hopeless. So let's remember faith currency. Let let us tip that balance in favor of faith, not in favor of fear. Anything that will cause the balance to tip in favor of fear, like anxiety, let's not give room. Let's not give room. Let's give room for only hope, courage, strength, and faith is the currency. Thank you so much. Uh, now I'll hand over to Teacher Gideon. Uh, God bless you, and may you continue uh, enjoying a season where you're able to tip the balance in favor of faith. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Hi, guys. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Teacher Elijah, for that uh, amazing uh, lesson. Let's keep balance in favor of faith and not fear, not worries, not anxiety. None of those. Let's keep the balance. Indeed, it has actually ministered to me. And the beauty for this lesson is that, um, you know, uh, it's not just relevant to the teens, it's relevant to us, you know. Challenges, uh, you know, once, you know, they become a whole lot in life. Yeah, they become a part of life, yeah. It's never on a straight line, you know. Today is this, tomorrow is that. But uh, these are special attributes and attitudes that if we develop, we, we, you know, we are equipped to handle life more better. It's time to do prayers and uh, allow me share my screen. Um, mm -hmm, yeah, 
here we go. You can see the screen. It's coming up. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we are going to do uh, three prayer points. And uh, here we go. The first one is we begin by giving thanks to God for he is good. Uh, this is what the scripture records in Nahum. Nahum is in the Bible. Uh, guys, do you know there's a book called Nahum? <laughs> Nahum is in the Bible. Nahum 1.7, this is what the Bible records. The Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. I love this scripture. It begins by saying what? The Lord is good. That's number one. Number two, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And number three, he knows those who take refuge in him. Those are three key elements and key pillars in our Christian faith. Number one, we need to acknowledge and know that God is good, despite and in spite, you know, despite what you are going through, God remains to be good. His goodness is not tied to situations. His goodness is not tied to circumstances. He is a good God. Number two, he is a stronghold in the day of trouble. So he did not make a promise to us that trouble will never come. But the promise is given us in his word is, he is a stronghold in the day of trouble. And number three, he knows those who take refuge in him, you know? So uh, because of his attribute, because of his goodness, because of his uh, strongholdness, if there is one, that word, eh, in the day of trouble, I just want us to give thanks to him. I just want us to take a moment and adore him, take a moment and honor him, take, it, take a moment and praise him for who he is, you know? Um, he's, he's a good God. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. And even what encourages me most is that he knows, he knows, he knows those who take, who takes their refuge in him, you know? So when we say, uh, when we have a troubled day, where do we run to? We run to God. God takes notice. God takes notice. God knows those who run to him. God knows those who come to him when they are, they are in trouble. God knows who, those who run to him, you know? Yeah, so uh, wherever you are, I want you to do it with a lot of um, sincerity. You know, there is no, um, uh, there is no uh, rocket science as far as prayer is concerned. Just come boldly. Come boldly into the throne room of the Father. Come boldly into the presence of God and do what? And just exalt him, exalt him, adore him, honor him and tell him, God, I bless you because you are a good, good father. I exalt you because you are an amazing God. I bless you because you know me. You know me. As I run to you, you know me. I bless you because you are good. Oh, I bless you because you are mighty. You are amazing. You are wonderful. Wewe ni muema. Wewe ni muema. Haufwananishwi na yeyote. Haufwananishwi na chochote. And on the account of your goodness, Lord, on the record of your goodness, we just want to praise you. We exalt you. We adore you. We honor you. We glorify you. Who compares to you? Who is a likened unto you? We love you. We exalt you. We magnify you. We adore you. Oh, how we praise you. How we exalt you. How we adore you. Thank you because you know us. You know us as a teens class. You know us. You understand us because we take our refuge in you. As a community of teachers, we you know us, oh God. As a ministry, you know us, you know us because we take our refuge in you. We bless you, we exalt you. We will not fear evil. We will have faith. We will face every mountain. We will face every challenge. We will face every obstacle because you are with us, because you are fighting for us, because you are going on, uh, uh, you're going ahead of us. You make every crooked way straight. 
for that we praise you for that we exalt you for that we adore you god none compares to you and none is a like unto you our hearts are full of gratitude our hearts are full of praise our hearts are full of adoration we give you praise we give you honor we give you adoration who compares to you among the sons of men there is none like you among the princes there is none like you you are god all by my all by yourself lord there is no place of argument there is no place of debate there is no place of contention you are praise you we exalt you we adore you lord we magnify you we honor you you are an amazing god you are a wonderful god you are a glorious god glorious in all your ways glorious glorious than the everlasting mountains you are glorious you are wonderful you are gracious we praise you we exalt you we adore you we love you we magnify you lord let it go on record that today as a teens class we are full of gratitude because of who you are. We are full of thanksgiving because of who you are. We are full of praise. We are a grateful lot. We are a grateful people. We are a people that walk in gratitude. We are a people that walk in gratitude because of your faithfulness. And because, goodness, and because of your goodness, and because of your righteousness, oh God, yes, God, you are an amazing God. You are a wonderful God. Receive praise, receive honor, and receive adoration, Lord, because you are good in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I know, uh, Catherine, could you be there? You could conclude this one for us. Yes, I am here. Thanks. Thanks. Let's pray. Our Father, our Lord, we humbly come before your presence this day, O oh Lord. We just want to thank you for every single thing that you've done. Lord, thank you for for your wonderful works, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we pray for if, we pray for if those. We thank you for taking care of us, O oh Lord, through this tough time. We don't take it for granted, O oh Lord. And thank you for watching over us and protecting us and being with us, O oh Lord. And Lord, we bless your name and we want to thank you for the rest of the day ahead of us and just be with us. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Wow, well, yeah. Uh, in light of what we've shared today, maybe you can ask this question. Is there a crisis that you or your family could be going through? You know, it could be a cash crunch. Maybe finances have reduced. Uh, it could be a sickness. It could be emotional. You've lost a loved one. Whatever the crisis it is, eh? there is hope for us in the word of God. Let's invoke on God's help. On, on God's name for help. Uh, Psalm 35 verse 2, this is what the scripture says, take hold of shield and buckler and rise for my help. This is David crying out to God and he's telling God, take hold of a shield and a buckler and rise up for my help. Eh? Uh, a shield, a shield, we, we all have an image of how a shield looks like. And a buckler, and he's telling God, you know, God, uh, rise up, rise up in, uh, take take hold of a sh of of shield, and buckler, and rise for my help, you know. And I want us to call on the name of the Lord this 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 morning, and tell the Father, Father, arise for my help, Lord. The situation is wearing me down, Father, arise for my help. The situation is is bringing us down. Father, arise for my help. Uh, the situation is draining us emotionally. Father, arise for my help. If there is a team to pray, there is a God who listens. There is a God who responds to that prayer. Uh, do not look down upon yourself. Uh, your prayers are, are recorded in heaven. Your prayers are responded to. God takes. God knows all those who trust in him. So to 
whatever you are in your own language, in your own words, I just want you to go before God. I want you to call on the name of the Lord upon that situation, that situation that has been weighing you or your family or your friend, that situation that has been weighing you down. We are rising up now in the name of Jesus and invoking the name of the Lord, asking him to arise as the man of war, asking him to arise to our rescue, to asking him to come for our rescue, to come for our help in the name of Jesus, that Lord is levering down every mountain, every mountain is being brought low in the name of Jesus, every mountain is being levelized, every mountain is coming low in the name of Jesus, every mountain of sickness, right now we speak unto you, oh who are you, oh great mountain, who are you before the Lord, who are you, it is not by my it is not by power. It is by the spirit of the Almighty God. It is by the spirit of the living God. We invoke on the name of Jehovah. We invoke on the name of Yahweh. Yahweh is our help. We have our help in God. We have our help in Jehovah. We have our help in the name of the Lord. Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, we will not be paralyzed by fear. We will not. We will not. We shall not walk in fear because the Lord is on our side. The Lord is by our side. The Lord is fighting for us. The Lord goes ahead of us. He maketh every crooked way straighter. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak to every mountain, every mountain of emotional emotional drain, and I speak and say, you are the you are the, you are the, you are the refiller of every cup. You are the refiller of every cup. You are the healer of every broken heart. You are the healer of every sick body. In the name of Jesus, we call on your name, Lord. We call on your name. We call on your name. And we send you in every household represented in this place, oh God. Wherever you went, you did good. Wherever you went, Lord, you did good. You entered Galilee, you did good. You entered Capernaum, you went, you did good. And I'm asking you, I'm asking that you you, you invade every household in this place, oh God, and, and, and shine forth your light. Let your light of your goodness shine forth in the name of Jesus. Lord, may you do good. May you do them good as far as your provision is concerned. Do them good, oh God, as far as your healing is concerned. Do them good as far as your salvation is concerned. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim and say that because you are good, crisis, crisis and affliction shall not strike again for a second time because you are an amazing God, because you are a wonderful God, because you are a loving God, you are a loving Father. Father, loving, loving, loving and amazing and awesome and glorious in all your ways. Oh, how we praise you, Jesus. How we exalt you. How we adore you. We invoke on your name and say, arise for our help. Arise and fight on our behalf. Arise for our help. Arise for our help. Arise for our help in the name of Jesus. Oh, we walk out victorious, Lord. We walk out victorious. We walk out victorious. We are saying that every doubt is being canceled, oh God. Every every financial burden is lifting up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are shining forth your light at the workplaces of our parents. You are shining forth your light. You are going in as the angel of light. You are going in as the as 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 the peace builder. In the name of Jesus, you fight on our behalf. You are going in. You are going in as our helper. You are helping every one of us, Lord. You are going in and helping us. You are helping helping each and every one of us, whatever situation that is weighing us down, these boulders that are weighing us down, you are lifting them off our backs, oh God, and you are giving us the peace of mind, and you are giving us the peace and the stability in the name of Jesus. We bless you and we exalt you. We proclaim that you are, we are the righteous one, that even in famine we have more than enough. In the times of devastation, we will smile and laugh because we are shielded. We are sheltered by the good shepherd in the name of Jesus. 
we bless you, we exalt you, we adore you. Have your way, Spirit of God. Have your way. Have your way in every teenager. Have your way in every teacher. Have your way in every parent. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Lord, have your way. Have your way through it in the name of Jesus. Because we love you and because we adore you and because we glorify you. None compares to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We honor you, Lord. Um, Flo, are you there? You could you could help us um, by concluding that prayer point. And then we move on to the last one. Flo? Okay. If Flo is not around, uh, do we have any volunteer who could help us? Natasha, Hazel, any of you? Are we here, guys? <laughs> or we've gone? We are here. They're all there. Okay, okay. I pray in general. Yeah, for that prayer point number two. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for watching our us during the night season. And thank you for bringing us here once again on this platform to um, learn about you. We come before you and we ask you to help us during these adverse times. And we ask you to give us the strength. And we thank you for the far that you have brought us. We thank you that we are still alive and healthy enable to, to be in communication with each other. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Uh, Flo, if you're there, please confirm. You're going to conclude the next prayer point we are going to make. Are you there? Okay. Amarisa, you're there? Yeah. Okay, so, so Marisa, you'll conclude the next one for us, okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. I want us to make this prayer. Uh, pray for your heart to remain anchored on God's word, yeah? Um, it is in the time of crisis that we, that our faith in God is shaken, you know? Uh, it is in the times of crisis that good Christians get to ask, where is my God? You know, it is in the times of crisis where people look back. It was in the time of crisis that um, Lord's wife turned back and she became a pillar of salt, yeah? And um, it was also in the time of crisis that Jesus uh, revealed to Simon Peter that the enemy, Satan, has sought for some permission to sift you like, um, you know, like wheat. But Jesus tells Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I love the response, but, but I love what Jesus tells him, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, uh, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. So he's saying, I know uh, you're just, we, are, we are all going through a crisis. Myself, I'm going to be um, crucified on the cross. You guys are going to be scattered. It is in times like this that the enemy seeks for permission, actually, to just sift you and toss you to and fro until you lose your balance, you know? But God is saying, this is Jesus. I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, yeah? And that's a prayer we are going to make. Can you just say, my heart will not fail in the times of crisis. Uh, in, 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 in troubled times like this one, my heart will remain anchored on, on God. Um, Jesus also said that um, whoever listens to this teaching of mine, I will liken him to a man who builds his house on the rock. Storms came and, you know, uh, storms came and the wind blew, but he was founded on the rock. And I pray that we will remain anchored on God's word. We will remain anchored so that our faith 
may not fail even during this time. Are you ready, guys? Yeah, so um, yeah, this is this is a prayer you're making for your heart, yeah? For me, I, I look at salvation more of a long term, you know? Uh, it's not something you pick when you're in your teenagers, then when you're in your 20s, you drop it because, you know, it was given to me. Or you pick it before you get married, once you get married, you drop it. No. You know, our relationship with God is, is long term. You get it's It's a long term kind of an engagement. And David says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I've not seen what? I've not seen the righteous man forsaken. How beautiful will it be uh, when, you, when you are giving your testimony, when you are in your 70s and you say, you know, when Corona came, I was only 16. I was only 10 years. And there was, there was all these troubles we were seeing around, but God has preserved us. And you are recounting on the faithfulness of God for the lifetime. You've walked the journey. You've, you've seen it all. You have, you have this tested wisdom on what God can do. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, uh, let's have our anchor on God and on God alone, yeah? Uh, and, and know that this is a long term. It's a long term kind of an engagement we have in God. It's a lifetime. It's a forever kind of arrangement we have with God. That even when we even when we pass, pass on from life to death, we still live in him, you know? And we are saying, I've, I've known you, I've known you. But even that time when we get to see him, our eyes, we will, his glory will be revealed to us and we will know him for sure. So I'm encouraging us that can we be so anchored on God that there will be no time we will even think the thoughts of turning back will never cross our, our hearts, maybe because of the crisis we are going through. We will be so anchored to hold on to God, no matter, no matter what. We are still, we, we are so rooted in God. We are, we are holding on to him. And you are like, Lord, I'm willing to go. As long as it is you, I am willing to go with you. Peter told Jesus, as long as it's you telling me to come, I, I can risk it all, as long as it is you. Can we pray for that kind of faith, you know? That kind of faith and that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of conviction and persuasion to be so anchored on God, to be so anchored on him and on him alone. I hope that clarifies what you are praying for, yeah? Yeah, so uh, pray for your heart. This is a personal prayer. It's a prayer you are praying and speaking to your heart. Tell your soul, oh, my soul, you will remain anchored on God and on God alone. Oh, my soul, rejoice and love the Lord your God. Oh, my soul, be anchored on his faithfulness. Be anchored on the truth of his word. Speak out right now in the name of Jesus. Speak to your heart. Speak to your soul. Speak to your being. Speak to everything around you. And speak to your soul and say, oh, my soul, you remain anchored on God. You remain anchored on his faithful word. You, you remain anchored in his faithfulness. In a times like now, when there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, shake up even even in church and people walking out of church and people walking out from the things that they have been taught speak to your soul speak to yourself speak to your heart and say you will not abandon the lord your god you will not walk out of the ordinances of god you will not walk out on the faithfulness of god you remain anchored you are founded on him and him alone in the name of jesus shake mazende rebazaka rika bazokro bozinde Bahandu, Sekri Bazanda, Rico Sakri Bazondo Robo Shindere Bahanda, Rika Bazondo Robo Zikri Babuzaya. Lord God Almighty, I proclaim and say, It shall be our portion, it shall be in the portion of every teenager and every teacher, even in this place. We shall all have this declaration that we were young and now we are old, yet we have never seen a righteous man forsaken, yet we've never seen a faithful man forsaken. Yet we've never seen anyone follow on God forsaken. We have been young and now we are old. Yet we have never seen anyone abandoned by God. Neither any of his generation, neither any of his descendants begging for bread. It shall it shall be our portion. It shall be our testimony that we have walked with God right from the days of our youth, that we have walked with God right from the days of our teenage, that we have walked with 
with God, right in the days of our childhood, yet we've never seen a righteous man forsaken. And now our grays are, our hairs are gray, but we've seen his faithfulness. Lord, I pray that for every soul, for every young teenager, for every one of us here, our hearts and our, our hearts will be founded and will be established in you. We will not turn our backs on you. We will not turn our backs on you. In the name of Jesus, in the moment of crisis, we will not turn our hearts on you. Listen, my heart, you will never turn your heart on God. He is your helper. He is your provider. He is your sustainer. He is your faithful God. Speak to your heart and declare to your heart, my heart, you are anchored on God. You are anchored on God and on God alone. Speak to your heart. Speak to your soul. Speak to your being and tell your being you are anchored on God. You will not fail. Your heart and your faith will not fail in the times of crisis. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, we exalt you, and we adore you. You are a loving God. You are a loving King. We bless you, we exalt you, we honor you. How precious, how wonderful are you? We exalt you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amarisa? Okay, um, let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you that we're alive today and during this week. Oh Lord, I pray that even though we may be going through tough times, even though some of us may be going through hard times, oh Lord, I pray that you will help us to stay anchored in your word, to stay anchored in you, oh Lord, to continue to trust you, oh Lord, to continue to love you, to not forsake you, that even though we may be going through hard times, oh Lord, that you will continue to take care of us and that we will not forsake you. We will continue to stay anchored to your word and to everything else about you, O oh Lord, that we will continue to trust you, O oh Lord. I pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, back to you, Teacher Rosie. Um, okay. um, Catherine, Catherine. thank you for that wonderful session and also the prayer session. It, I hope it has impacted each one of you positively. And uh, I would like to thank you for joining us and being with us through the service. And I hope you leave you like our Facebook Facebook page and I wish you a blessed week. And thank you once again. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God of and God, the, fellowship the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now, now and forever. And forever. Amen, amen and amen.